Every Android application runs in a limited access sandbox. If an application requires access to resources outside the sandbox, then the application needs to request permission. The application declares all the permissions it requires in the Android manifest.xml file. <coughs> Let's open the Trojan-signed application that we have decoded and decompiled. And let's open the Android manifest.xml file. I'll expand that. As you can see here on all versions of Android, to declare that the application needs a permission, we need to use this permission within the tags called uses dash permission these ones here written in blue the android manifest file will start with the manifest tag and will close or ends with a manifest tag and all the permissions will be listed within the use dash permissions tag some permissions are considered normal so the system immediately grants them upon installation. Other permissions are considered dangerous, as we've seen earlier in the slide. So the user must explicitly grant the permission to the application. Beginning with Android 6.0 or API level 23, user can revoke permissions from any app at any time, even if the application targets lower API levels. So if you're using, so if the application is using your contacts yesterday, should it sh the application shouldn't assume that it will still have access to your contact today. So you can, so you can deny the permission at any time. Let's see, let's see here on the decoded application, what are the permissions required? Actually, we have a couple of dangerous permissions required, such as read phone state, send SMS, receive SMS, record audio, call phone, read contacts, write contacts, record audio, write settings, camera, read SMS, actually all of these are considered dangerous permissions. So this is the first thing to do. Uh, so this is the first thing to do. So this is how we start perform. So this is how we, so this is how we perform initial static malware analysis. We start with the Android manifest.xml file and check the permissions. The next thing that you need to do in this file, the next thing that you need to know while working with this XML file is the activity tag. Spotting these dangerous permissions is a great indicator for malicious activities. If you want to have a if you want to have a if you want to have a comprehensive overview about dangerous permissions, you can refer to the Android documentation. In this video, we will continue our analysis for the Trojan.apk file that we have created earlier. So I have gathered everything in this folder here. As you can see, uh, the APK file, the jar file, and the uh, all the uh, resources. So let's go and check again the manifest.xml file. I'll open it now with the browser and not uh, a, a not a reader. So uh, we've seen earlier these permissions. If you scroll down, usually you'll be able to see some 
uh, declared services that might indicate the existence of a malicious uh, activity. But for the sake of uh, going further and analyzing the JAR file, notice here the activity tag. It, uh, it starts with a label, then an Android name. This is the name of the main class that will initiate. This is the name of the main class that will initiate the application. So uh, remember that it's called main activity. We'll close that and go to the jar file and open it in the JD GUI. So let's move that here. We'll open JD GUI and expand it a bit. So here you go, this is JD GUI, this is the interface of it. On the left side, you will see the list of classes declared by the application. And as we've seen earlier, the initiating class is main activity. So under that, you'll be able to see the constructor. Uh, actually, there's nothing spooky about that. It's just initiating the application. What we're gonna do now is perform some keyword search as we've seen earlier we have some recommended words that we need to search for to inspect any possible malicious activity let's uh, let's go here uh, press on that button which is the search button and as you can see you can search by type field uh, string constant module etc Remember that the search functionality in JD GUI is case sensitive. So I've done, I've done some analysis earlier to this file and one of the string constants that we can search for is socket. So let's, uh, let's, enab let's enable the string constant here and let's search for socket. So as you can see, we're using a lowercase s, it will find nothing, but uppercase s, it will indicate that in the payload.class, there is something or some declaration for socket. So let's close that. And let's search again for socket here. If you scroll down, So as you can see, this is another. De this is a declaration for socket. Socket means you're ex establishing a connectivity with an external server. So this might indicate that there is some input and output streams coming and going. Uh, this might indicate that there is some input and output streams established by the application. Let's go up again because I've noticed something not usual this is a small application by the way and you can search it manually without going through the, the search keyword search or the search list as you can see here there is some declaration of a data structure of arrays and these numbers are seriously not clear it might indicate a combination of the IP and the port that this application is establishing connectivity to so you can scan it manually. Obviously, this is the most malicious class within the, the application. So we were able to So we were able to spot some sockets which indicate connectivity to external server and the declaration of a malicious or unusual kind of data structure.
Another keyword that we can use in our search is uh, HTTP. So let's open the search again and write HTTP, which might indicate as well a certain connectivity to external servers. Uh, obviously, let's close that. Here is a declaration for HTTP. Let's do another search. In the b.class as well, there is another declaration for HTTP, which as well might indicate certain traffic or certain connectivity established with an external entity.